Hi everybody, I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, we're going to be finishing up section 2.5 from your textbook, which is our discussion of the sort of process using Gaussian elimination of solving systems of linear equations using matrices. And now, in this half of sort of our discussion of section 2.5, we're going to be actually looking at the sort of theoretical underpinnings of this to understand how some of the properties of matrices, namely the rank of a matrix, actually can tell us about what type of solution set we're going to encounter. So in this video, uh, we're basically going to ach uh, achieve sort of most of the major results we want about systems of linear equations. We'll understand under what conditions systems have either no solutions, one solution, or infinite solutions. In the process, we'll also understand that those are the only three options that we have. So in other words, every system of linear equations either has no solutions, one unique solution, or an infinite amount of solutions. And since we've already discussed in the first part of the section 2.5 sort of material how to find these solutions, this will really complete those major questions that we sort of posed about how do we know that a system has solutions, uh, in what sort of conditions need to be true for, those, for the, us to get these different types of solution sets, and how to find those solutions. So let's get into this. So to start off with, uh, one quick piece of notation that we want to mention here is that whenever we see this A with sort of that pound symbol or that hashtag sort of symbol there, uh, that's our notation for the augmented form of a matrix. And remember, the augmented form of a matrix is just that you took the matrix of system coefficients and you augment one extra column that is the column that is the system co uh, the system constants. So a augmented is some is a piece of notation that really only makes sense when we're talking about a matrix that corresponds to a system of linear equations. So what we're going to be doing at the beginning part of this video is we're going to look at a series of lemmas. Lemmas are basically sort of mini theorems. Um, you could just call each of these a theorem in of itself. But really what we're doing is we're establishing some different cases. And then at the end of this, we're going to have sort of a main theorem uh, where there won't be really anything to prove in the main theorem because we'll have established all the sort of parts of the theorem through these little lemmas here. So these lemmas, again, they're just sort of, um, they're just sort of a nicer name for these mini theorems where we're going to handle a lot of the sort of work for our big theorem towards the end of the video. So our first lemma uh, is pretty straightforward. It says, suppose we have a system AX equals B. So a, a, we've got a matrix equation that's representing a system. Uh, then the rank of A augmented is either equal to the rank of A or the rank of A augmented is equal to the rank of A plus one. Um, so in other words, it's saying that the rank of A augmented is either the rank of the original matrix or the rank of the original matrix plus one. You'll notice that I didn't put a place to prove this because this should be pretty clear. What are you doing when you augment a matrix? Well, you're adding one single column. So the most impact that that could possibly have, since we know that rank is limited by both the number of rows and number of columns, the most impact that that could possibly have is by providing one additional pivot position, meaning one additional non-zero row, which would mean that it would only add one, one to the overall rank. Obviously, augmenting might not change anything, which is why we have one possibility where the rank of A augmented is the same as the rank of A, and one possibility where the rank of A augmented is equal to the rank of A plus one. It doesn't make any sense that the rank of A augmented that has an extra column would be smaller than the original rank, and it certainly doesn't make any sense since we're only adding or augmenting by one column that we'd have the rank increase by two or three or something. So this is one of the few lemmas we're gonna state without proof because there's really nothing to prove there. It's sort of just intuitive. Note that this does mean that in general, the rank of A is always less than or equal to the rank of A augmented. So that's another way of sort of phrasing this up here. In fact, I believe your book just states this as a little sort of minor lemma at the beginning, rather than specifically saying that it's going to be one of these two options. Again, doesn't matter which way you like to think about it. Okay, so the first real lemma that we're actually going to sort of discuss and prove is lemma two here. So lemma two says, suppose we have a system AX equals B. So again, a system written into a matrix or vector equation where A is M by N. Then if the rank of A equals the rank of A augmented equals N. So if the rank of A is equivalent to the rank of A augmented is equivalent to N, then the system will have a unique solution. So this lemma here right here basically establishes the conditions necessary for a system to have a unique solution. So let's go ahead and think about the proof of this. So to do this, let's imagine, sort of, imagine putting A into 
row echelon for now of course a is just some arbitrary matrix so we don't know exactly what it's going to look like so when i imagine putting it into row echelon form i can't guarantee i don't know all the values but i can sort of talk about the general form here so what we're going to assume is you know we've got some leading one and then we maybe have a bunch of stuff uh then of course we know that we have all zeros below that uh then maybe we have another leading one and we have some stuff and of course that continues on and on uh, down to maybe where we have another leading one here. Maybe this is our last leading one. There could potentially be some other things here. And then of course at the bottom we might have, uh, we'll give ourselves a little bit more space. At the bottom here, uh, we might have some zero rows, right? But of course that doesn't sort of matter. We just can imagine that we have some zero rows down here. Maybe no zero rows, maybe a couple zero rows, maybe a single zero row, whatever. But that's what we're putting something into row echelon form sort of looks like visually, right? You have a bunch of leading ones. You have all zeros under those leading ones. So all this stuff is zeros. And maybe you have some other stuff over here to the side. And then at the bottom, you have your zero rows. Okay. Now, the other thing we sort of know is we know that the rank of A is equal to N. So in this format here, all of these, there's N uh, non-zero rows in this format. Because remember, what is the rank of A? Well, it's the number of non-zero rows once you put something into row echelon form. Now, let's imagine that we also had our augmented component. Now remember, the augmented component has the same rank, meaning that when we augment with this extra column, it can't give us any additional non-zero rows, meaning all these rows up here already have leading ones, so it doesn't matter what's over here. But when we look down at this zero rows down here, everything down here must also be zero in the augmented form. Because if there was any non-zero value down here, then we'd have something that was a zero row with a non-zero value here. And that would mean that the rank of A augmented would be one higher than the rank of A, which we know it's not because they're equivalent. So all this has to be zeros here as well. Okay, so if we look at this then, so this is sort of our format. We've got some zero rows, possibly, all equal to zero there. And then we've got n non-zero rows here with those sort of pivot positions and then some values here. So why does this tell us that we were gonna have a unique solution? Well, what we should sort of see here is that since we have n variables, how do I know that we have n variables? Well, if we have an m by n system, remember the number of rows is the number of equations and the number of columns is the number of variables. So since we have n variables, and n non-zero rows, we can back solve for each individual variable uniquely. How do I know that it's going to be unique? Well, this one here, this is gonna be, since it's gonna be, we've got n non-zero rows and n variables, this one will solve for the first variable. Then the next one, since we'll already have this variable, we will solve for the next one, the next one, the next one, so on and so forth. So this guarantees that if the rank of A equals the rank of A augmented equals n, then you're guaranteed that this is going to have a unique solution. So the solution will be unique. So there we go. That shows us that if we're in the situation where the rank of A matches the rank of A augmented, matches the number of variables, we're guaranteed to have a unique solution. So that's one of the sort of three main situations we're gonna be discussing. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the next lemma. So the next lemma, very similar, says suppose we, again we have this system where A is M by N, and in this case we're gonna say that the rank of A is less than the rank of A augmented then the system will have no solutions. So let's do the same thing. Let's imagine putting A into row echelon form. So again, that means we've got like a leading one, a bunch of stuff, then of course a zero, maybe another leading one, a bunch of stuff. This is gonna continue. At some point, we're gonna have zeros, zeros, and then another leading one, and then maybe some stuff. And then of course, We'll give ourselves just a little bit more space down here. Maybe we'll have some zero rows. Maybe. Again, I'll sort of separate there. So there we go. This would be putting A into augmented form. Now let's imagine augmenting it. So how would the rank of A augmented be larger than the rank of A? 
Well, what that must mean is that there's a bunch of stuff here. And then down in this section, which were zero rows in A, there has to be a non-zero value over here which would give us a non-zero row that only is in rank of A, or is only in A augmented, meaning that rank of A augmented would be one larger. So there must be over here a non-zero value. Okay, that is the only way that the rank of A augmented, because remember, A augmented has all the same stuff here, just got this extra column. None of this stuff matters, but it would have to have some non-zero value, and that non-zero value would have to match up with that section that has zero rows. But what does this tell us then? Well, if we have a zero row over here, we have something where it's like 0x1 plus 0x2 plus da da da, 0xn is supposed to be equal to some non-zero value. But if that's the case, then that's impossible. You can't take zero times every variable, add it all up, and get some non-zero value. So this right here, just like we saw in the computational example we did in the previous video, when we got a zero row here and a non-zero value in the augmented section, that meant that there were no solutions. So since this has to happen to guarantee rank of A augmented greater than rank of A, then we know it's inconsistent since 0x1 plus 0x2 plus dot 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 plus 0xn equals non-zero value, impossible. So there we go. So this shows us a necessary condition for knowing when we will have no solutions, when we have an inconsistent system. If we ever know that the rank of A is gonna be less than the rank of A augmented, or if you prefer, you could say, whenever we know that the rank of A augmented is one larger than the rank of A, then automatically our system will have no solutions. So now we've seen conditions based on the rank for unique solutions and no solutions. Let's get to our final uh, setup here, which is what happens when there are infinite solutions. So lemma four, Let's again suppose we have the system AX equals B, where A is M by N. Rank of A is equal to rank of A augmented, so these two are equivalent, but we're going to assume that it is less than N, less than the number of variables. Then the system will have an infinite number of solutions with N minus the rank of A free parameters. Same idea here, right? Let's imagine putting A into row echelon form. So what is that going to look like? Same thing we've done, have like a leading one, have a bunch of other stuff, then a zero, then another leading one somewhere, a bunch of stuff, and that'll continue, zero, zero, down to zero, maybe another leading one, maybe some stuff. And again, potentially there's some zero rows here. Okay, now we know at this point, because we're assuming that the rank of A is equal to the rank of A augmented is less than N, right? Up here, we have rank of A, non-zero rows, which of course is less than n. And that's what we have here. And again, these zero rows sort of are off on their own. Now, if we think about the augmented part, well, because the rank of A augmented is equal to the rank of A, we know that we could have whatever we like here. But once we get down into this section of zero rows, if there are any, all this must be zeros here as well. Because if there weren't zeros here, then the rank of A augmented would be larger than the rank of A, and we'd be in the previous case where it would be inconsistent. So we know it looks something like this. So this is actually more similar to the second lemma. Well, we can begin by back solving. So you would back solve each variable, but the big difference here is there are only going to be rank of A constraints. In other words, there's only going to be rank of A different equations that you can use to back solve. But we know that the rank of A is less than the number of variables. So since we have less constraints than variables, this sort of difference in the amount of constraints to the amount of variables is how many free variables we can use. So we can have free parameters equal to the number of variables minus the rank of A. This means we will have infinite solutions. 
So in other words, just to sort of recap this, basically what we're saying here is that this statement here, rank of A equals rank of A augmented, guarantees that if there are any zero rows, they match up with zeros, which means that there will be solutions. The fact that rank of A is then less than N, that tells us that up here, once we put it into row echelon form, even though we started with M equations, we end up with rank of A equations that actually matter. When we use those rank of A equations using back substitution, that's going to restrict a rank of A amount of the variables. But since there are more variables, the remaining variables, N minus the rank of A, are going to be free variables. So that tells us then that we will have infinite solutions with a number of free parameters being equal to n minus the rank of a. So there we go. This now, if we put these four lemmas, basically the lemma two, lemma three, and lemma four are the ones that we really want. We now know conditions based on the rank of a and the rank of a augmented that tell us when we will have a unique solution, when we will have no solutions, and when we have infinite solutions. So. We went and did, did these proofs sort of based visually on the row echelon form. That's why row echelon form was so important to us. Now let's go ahead and summarize these lemmas together into a couple main theorems. So this right here is sort of the main theorem that puts all that stuff together. It says, suppose we have a system, AX equals B, where A is M by N. If the rank of A equals rank of A augmented, then the system will be consistent. So that answers the question of when do systems have solutions? They have solutions when the rank of A equals the rank of A augmented. It will have a unique solution if the rank of A equals the rank of A augmented equals N, the number of variables, and it will have infinite solutions if rank of A equals rank of A augmented is less than the number of variables. You might say, why isn't there a case where rank of A equals rank of A augmented is greater than N? Well, we know that that's impossible because the number of rows and the number of columns are both limiting factors for the rank, so there's no way the rank could be greater than N. In the case where you have infinite solutions, then N minus the rank of A will give you the number of free parameters. You can sort of think about the rank of A as how many actual constraints you have on your variables. So the remaining amount of variables, N minus the rank of A, is how many free parameters you can use. Finally, if the rank of A is ever less than the rank of A augmented, then the system is automatically inconsistent. Do we need to have an if rank of A greater than rank of A augmented situation? No, nope. again, that's impossible. Like we said, rank of A augmented is always either the same as the rank of A or one higher. So there's no case where we need to consider the rank of A being larger than the rank of A augmented. So this right here is super crucial. I mean, this basically is what we wanted to sort of come up with. Um, we wanted something that told us about the conditions for the different types of solution sets, and there we go, we actually found it. Now, right below here, um, we can restate this theorem for the very special type of system for homogeneous systems when that B is actually equal to the zero vector. So I am gonna restate that right here. This is just the same theorem, but applied specifically to homogeneous systems since they are gonna be very important for us. So this theorem says uh, for homogeneous systems, suppose we have a system AX equals zero, where A is M by N. Then remember this system is always consistent since X being equal to zero. So in other words, taking every variable and setting it equal to zero is automatically a solution. However, it will still have a unique solution and that unique solution will be X equals zero, which means all the variables equal to zero. If the rank of A equals the rank of A augmented equals N. And it will have infinite solutions, again, if the rank of A is less than the rank of A augmented is less than, is equal to the rank of A augmented is less than N. And it will still have N minus the rank of A free parameters. The case that's not mentioned here is the chance for it to be inconsistent because homogeneous systems are always consistent since X equals zero is always a solution. Note that this also means that for homogeneous systems, the rank of A always matches the rank of A augmented because if it didn't, then it would be inconsistent, but we know homogeneous systems are never inconsistent. Okay, so these theorems, again, very, very crucial because they really are, we achieved our first major goal in this section, which is, you know, we sort of introduced these matrices, these matrix operations, we said matrices could represent systems, and then we said, let's come up with a sort of higher level understanding of the solution sets of systems of equations. And now we have that higher level understanding. It's all based on the comparison of the rank of A to the rank of A augmented to the number of variables. Now, this, of course, coupled with what we did in the first part of section 2.5, which is where we actually established 
Gaussian elimination tells us that now not only do we have conditions for the solution sets, we also know how to literally find the solutions. So this pretty much tells us that we are at, so far doing very well with our understanding of systems of linear equations. Before we move into the next section though, what I'd like to do is a quick example, sort of trying to make use and make sure that we understand the sort of consequences of these theorems. So we're gonna do sort of a theoretical exercise based on uh, solution sets, where we're gonna take a look at some different systems of equations, have some information given to us about the rank, and then try to deduce what are the possibilities for the solution set. So let's take a look. So as an example here, what we're going to do is in each of these situations, we're going to try to describe the solution set as thoroughly as possible. If there are multiple cases, which might happen, we're going to have to explain how these cases arise. And when we're doing this, we're going to assume that if it says B, then it's not equal to zero, meaning if it's, if it's written as B there, it's a non-homogeneous system. So um, we'll go through each of these individually, but I want you guys just to see that on these types of questions, what we're being asked is we're not given what the system coefficients look like or the system constants or anything. So we're not actually able to solve this. This is just being done in general. But what we're given is information about how large the matrix A is and what its rank is. And that's actually enough to determine all the possible cases for the solution set. So let's take a look at A here. So for this one, we have AX equals B, where A is a five by five matrix, and we know that the rank of A is equal to five. First thing we might want to take a note of is that Nothing about rank yet, but just A augmented, well, when we augment, is going to be a 5 by 6 matrix, right? It's going to be 5 by 6 because what do you do when you augment? You just add a column. So it's probably good to keep that in mind. Okay, so the first question we would want to ask ourselves is, is it possible, since we know that the rank of A is 5, for the rank of A augmented to be 6, right? We know rank of A augmented is either going to be equal to the rank or one larger. So is it possible for rank of A augmented to be equal to 6? So rank of A augmented equals 6. Well, that's not possible because A augmented is a 5 by 6 matrix, meaning it only has 5 rows. There's no way it could have 6 non-zero rows. So this is impossible. So we can just throw that out. We don't even need to worry about it. So that means that rank of A augmented is going to need to be 5. It has to be. Well, that means that rank of A is going to equal rank of A augmented. That's guaranteed now because only five is gonna make sense as rank of A augmented. So that means it is going to be consistent. What is the solution set going to look like? Well, since it's a five by five matrix, that means there were five variables. And since the rank of A is five, well, since rank of A equals five equals number of variables, that tells us this has to have a unique solution. So in other words, if you have a five by five matrix and you know the rank of that matrix is five, then the system that corresponds to that must have a unique solution. It doesn't tell us what that unique solution is, but it's guaranteed that it has to be a unique solution because if you have a five by five matrix with a rank of A being five, there's no way for it to be inconsistent. And since it matches the number of variables, it's gotta have a unique solution. Okay, let's try B here. Same idea. So if we want to make a note here, A augmented is going to be 4 by 4. And we know that the rank of A is equal to 2. Do we even need to consider this situation where rank of A augmented is going to be equal to 3? Well, no, because this is a homogeneous system. So the first thing we want to make note of here is that this is a homogeneous system. So that implies that rank of A is going to equal rank of A augmented is going to equal 2. And that means it's guaranteed to be consistent, right? We know every homogeneous system is gonna be consistent, okay? Is it gonna be a unique solution? Is it gonna be an infinite number of solutions with free parameters? Well, we can sort of check here. We have rank of A is equal to two, and we have number of variables is equal to three. Again, we know that because that's what the original number of columns was in the original matrix. This is smaller than this, so we know that there's going to be infinite solutions with three minus two equals one free parameter. So when we were to solve this, there would be one free parameter, one free variable, and everything would be based on the choice of that one free variable. So there we go. That's the only situation that could happen here. If you have a homogeneous system, AX equals zero, where A is four by three, but has a rank of two, then that system is guaranteed to have infinite solutions with one free parameter. Okay, let's take a look at C. 
see we have ax equals b. a is a 7 by 4, so 7 equations, 4 variables, and the rank of a is 4. So a augmented here is going to be uh, 7 by 5. So first case, is it possible that the rank of A augmented could be higher than the rank of A? So in other words, rank of A augmented, in this case, is it possible that it's 5? Well, A augmented is 7 by 5. The limiting factor would be the number of columns, which would be limited by 5. So this is possible. So this is possible. If true, then system is inconsistent. So if the rank of A augmented turns out to be 5, then this will be an inconsistent system. What if the rank of A augmented stays as 4? Well, if rank of A augmented is equal to 4, then this will be consistent because the rank of A augmented will equal the rank of A. And it will be a unique solution. How do we know it's a unique solution? Because the rank of A will match the number of variables. Rank of A equals number of variables. So what this tells us is if you have a 7 by 4 system where the rank of A is 4, you either have an inconsistent system or you have a unique solution. It's impossible for it to have an infinite number of solutions. It's either going to have no solutions or one single solution, depending on whether or not rank of A augmented is 5 or 4 here. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So AX equals B. Uh, a is 3 by 6 and rank of A is equal to 3. So A augmented here is going to be 3 by 7. First thing we need to know is, is it possible that rank of A augmented is going to be 4, which is 1 higher than the rank of A? Notice that 4 is impossible because the limiting factor in A augmented is going to be those three rows. So this is impossible. So we don't need to worry about that. So we know rank of A augmented is going to have to be 3, which means that this system is automatically going to be consistent. Since the rank of A is 3, and since there were 6 variables, we know that there are going to be infinite solutions with 6 minus 3 equals 3 free parameters. So this system here, it's guaranteed to be a system with 3 free parameters, so there'll be 3 free variables, and the other 6 variables will be determined by your choice of those 3 free variables. All right, last one here. We have AX equals 0, where A is 8 by 5 and rank of A is equal to 5. A augmented again is going to be an 8 by 6 matrix. Again, no reason to even think about rank of A augmented being different because this is a homogeneous system. So this is a homogeneous system, which implies that rank of A augmented is definitely going to be equal to the rank of A. So that means this will be a consistent system. And if we look at that, the rank of A does match the number of variables. So this is going to have a unique solution. And that unique, that because that's the, that's because the rank of A is equal to the number of variables. And we can even go a step further. Since it's a homogeneous system, we actually know what that unique solution must be. That unique solution must be X equals zero. It has to be x equals 0 because we know x equals 0, and this means that x equals the vector 0, meaning x1 is 0, x2 is 0, x3 is 0, x4 is 0, and x5 is 0. I know that there's five variables because we have five columns, so it would have to look like that. But you could just say x equals 0 because you mean the vector x equals vector 0. That has to be the unique solution because for every homogeneous system, x equals 0 is a solution. So if we know that there's only one solution, that one must be it. So the point of this exercise here is one, to show you guys the, sort of the power of those theorems and understanding the potential solution sets. And two, just to make sure you understand how we can think in general without even having to rely on computational things about the limitations between rank of A and rank of A augmented. While these seem very sort of theoretical, keep in mind the rank of A augmented it's got to be either the same as the rank of A or one higher, and it's always limited by the number of rows and columns. So if you keep all that in sort of mind, well, then you can easily talk about all the different possibilities for the solution sets. This wraps up section 2.5 for us. In our next video, we'll be moving into section 2.6.